30 years after you started commentating on darts, the sport is where it is today. I think that I'm totally over the moon at the global ness of darts now, the fact that there's £6 million pounds prize money. People are bobbing about from Las Vegas to Beijing. It's wonderful as 10,000 people come to the Premier Leagues. Uh, the unicorn champions are everywhere and loving every minute of it. And when I started in the Leeds Irish Centre in 1972, where they were serving pints of beer with wellies on and a lot, and we had an audience of about 300, I never dreamt, Stuart, that it would be, here we are, 37 years later, Freddie Truman, I'll serve you in a tick, world's our lobster. I mean, how big can it get, sir? Um, I'll say with darts that, Stuart, it's a question of, uh, it's atavistic, it's in the gut. You could show an Eskimo how to play in half an hour, he'd be beating you. That's me. Uh, after F Phil Taylor went to the Arctic and played for a week, somebody had beat him. That's the beauty about it, that I think uh, the exhibition will never die. Alan Evans, Jockey Wilson showing up, playing the best 10 in Birmingham, Barnsley or Newcastle. I think it's still a democratic game. Phil Taylor still goes into those exhibitions in pubs. And I think so he's made what? I think if you add it up, uh, I think he's made nearly £900,000 in the last, what, year and a half. So by the end of this year, Phil will probably have made £1.2 million from darts. And now when I started, you got kissed from Diana Dawes and you got a mini in 1972 for winning the news of the world. It's just gone mad. And it's showing no signs of letting up, though, is it? At all. Well, the thing is, because we are uh, the old saying, don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Worthington. Put your son. There are a lot of lads now. Now, I'm place I live, there's six pubs closed in the last six months. So you can't play darts in Yorkshire in pubs anymore. So young lads are playing in garages. They buy those plastic boards and the little cork boards. And there's a generation spearheaded by James Weird, who was a star world champ when he was 17. There is a ground rush of it at a level that's got nothing to do with the pub, and that's healthy. I think it's amazing where they're coming from, lads like Joe Cullen, young Bowsfield, and where did, where did I need to Dob Romislova come from? Out of the blue from the Urals, from Russia with shove, bash, crash. There is talent out there under every stone around the world. So in the next 18 months, two years, who do we look out for? Who, who, who's going to be making the headlines? In the latest edition of TV Times... Man from Low Stuffed, nut had pink hair the night before, showed up with purple hair. Righty at Blackpool, a chance. Osborne, fit as a lop. Taylor's admires it being so very fit. At the moment, he's a work in progress. Adrian Lewis is going to come very good in the next six months. Bristow says, I've named 16 possible world champions. I'll say it again. Adrian has got more talent than anybody, including the power. The power... I think he played 80% in Las Vegas the other week and he hammered everybody. His best average was only about 108. I think in Blackpool we can see him beat the world record for a final, which is, you know, is 109.5. And <laughs> James the Weird, Jekyll and Hyde, not sure about him. I think the two people most likely to challenge Taylor in the next 12 months are Adrian Lewis. I don't think Barney's got his head together at the moment and there's a lot of problem with his equipment. I think he's arguing with people about his flight. Some say use that flight, some say no. There's problems in the camp and he doesn't handle that well. I see Osborne, James Wade and Adrian Lewis as Phil's biggest rivals over the next 12 months.